Hello and welcome to this lecture for CPI 111. In this video we are going to create a platform game. This is a, sort of a major genre of uh, video game, of 2D video games, especially used a lot on uh, mobile devices. And uh, we're going to be following along with, uh, roughly speaking, with a printed tutorial that is available on the course Blackboard site. It's uh, uh, from a uh, tutorial created by Mark Overmars. And we're going to skip some pieces of it uh, in the video, but I encourage you very strongly to learn how to make a platform game well. To so start right at the beginning of that uh, printed lesson on creating platform games and work your way all the way through it. In our case, we're going to start with a version of the platformer that already has some components in it. Let me show you for this first part of the video where we're going to end up. For part one of our video, we're going to have a one uh, level, one room, with a character who can move left and right and can also jump up in the air and then can jump onto platforms. You'll see that as I'm up in the air I've got some control over direction which is not accurate to real world physics but is something you'll commonly see, commonly see in video games. So let's get ourselves to that point. I'll be working with uh, a version of the platformer game that you will find up on the course Blackboard site as you follow through with uh, this lesson on the video and in the class. Please be sure to download the uh, file that is on the Blackboard site and follow along using it. So let's take a look at uh, in this version that we're working with now. Uh, we don't have the main character yet. We're going to add that in so I can show you the sort of functionality that you'll want to build into your platform game to make the character move. But let's see what we do have. We've got uh, some block sprites. These are going to be essentially walls, similar to what we've used in past assignments when we created our maze game. They'll work in the same way, basically providing a solid uh, place to bounce against uh, that will uh, be seen in the game as a tile set. So we'll use more attractive images as tiles, but the, in terms of actual interaction we'll be using these uh, these block sprites. And then we have a left and a right character sprite. Other objects we have in this file, we've got a uh, sky background to use in our room. Uh, you can see it's fairly small, so we're going to tile it, and I'll show you that in just a moment. And then we've got our tile set. These are going to be used for all of our platforms that the player can uh, jump on and the walls that they collide against just for the visuals. Uh, the main thing to notice here is that I've got the tile width set to 16 by 16, which divides it up properly so that we can select those to create our rooms. Taking a look at the room itself, If I look at the backgrounds, you'll see um, our background zero is the sky sprite, and the uh, key to notice here is that I'm tiling it horizontally and vertically, which is why it fills the whole room. And if I take a look at my tiles tab, you'll see that I've selected that back uh, tiles uh, uh, sprite. In the room, we've already placed all of the tiles out and arranged it into a nice little level and then on top of those uh, tiles using the objects tab I've gone and placed each of the blocks and again these won't appear when we play the game but they allow us to set up where the wall should be. Alright let's go ahead now and create our player object We've got him sitting right here uh, using the right sprite for our player. Just briefly, let's look at our sprites before we get in and, and work in creating uh, the events and actions that will help our player move. There's an important setup in our sprite that I want you to take a look at. 
it's a change from what we've done in the past uh, related to how we will check for collisions when our player collides with the blocks in the game. Previously, in previous assignments in class, we've just used precise collision detecting, uh, which is on usually by default. If we use precise collision detecting here, we'll have a problem in that our player sprite is this little tiny guy, and yet there's some space around him. And if we leave this open space around him, or if, um, if we use this precise collision detecting, we run into some uh, sort of weird looking issues uh, where our player will look as if he uh, isn't touching one of the platforms, but actually will be triggering a collision. So what we've done instead is we've used the modify mask property. And in doing that, we've set the bounding box, the place that will actually detect collisions, to manual. And then we've changed the left, right, top, and bottom uh, measurements for the bounding box. And if you look at the image off to the right, you'll see that what we've done is in this dark gray rectangle shows where we will be able to detect collision. So we've just sort of mashed it right down so it's right at the edges of our uh, player character sprite in the shape of a rectangle. And we've done the same thing for our left collision sprite. All right, so those are the key things to look at. With all of that set up, let's go in and take a look at our object character and start to work on adding his events and actions. We're going to start off with a step event. And we're just going to use a step step event. And we're going to do a few things, and it's around this time as our actions start to get more complex that I'm going to suggest you begin to use comments that will allow uh, sort of a, a, a reader, someone else who's looking through your program, to know what exactly is going on. It's also good to use comments to remind yourself what uh, you're doing as you work your way through. So if you go to the Control tab and you look down to the Code section, you'll see this little exclamation mark. That's the comment action. Here's where you can enter in sort of regular English phrases to help you, to help remind you what you're doing. The first thing we're going to do in our actions on the step event is to check whether or not our player object uh, is in the air inside our level. So we'll say something like that. And here's how we're going to actually make that check. We're going to come up to the question section and select uh, check empty. So what we're checking for is to see if uh, a, a position uh, above, below, left, or right from our player object is empty, if there's nothing solid in that position. So let me show you how that works. We know that where the player is currently is going to the x is going to be zero. That just means where it's sitting now. If we want to check if there's some if there is an empty space below the player, meaning that it's up in the air, we can set the y to one. So that's going to be one pixel down from where the uh, player object is at the moment. And we're going to check for only solid objects, our blocks that we have. Uh, included in our on our project, just like back in our maze game, are have don't have any code, have nothing associated with them, but they're solid objects. So it's going to detect whether there is a solid object one pixel beneath where the uh, character is at the moment. And if we're checking one uh, pixel beneath us, we need to use relative so that it's one pixel down from wherever the player is at the moment of this check. If the player is in the air, what we're going to do is we're going to add um, gravity to our player so that it will drop down. Right? It's up in the air. We want it to fall towards the Earth. So on the move 
tab, we'll select the set gravity. We'll set the direction to 270, 270 degrees, which is straight down, remembering our weird <laughs> game maker angles. And we'll set the gravity to something pretty small, 0.5. And then that will cause it to drop down towards the ground. So that sets us up for if the player object is in the air. But what are we going to do if it isn't in the air? Well, we'll come back to our control tab, and we'll include an else statement, which will allow us to set some actions for when it's on the ground. If it's on the ground, we don't really need to use the gravity, and so we'll come back again to our uh, set gravity, and we'll just set the uh, direction to 270, and we'll set the gravity to 0. Now we're going to have to do one more thing uh, in each step as the game is playing along. And to remind ourselves what this thing is, I'll add in another comment. What I want to do is I want to set um, how fast the player can fall. Right? If, they're, if they're way up in the air and they start falling, it'll, they'll just start zooming at super high rates of speed because they keep picking up speed due to the gravity. So I'm going to limit the vertical speed. To make that happen, I'm going to check the vertical speed by using the check the test variable action. So I need to name the variable, which is vSpeed. This is one of those built-in variables in GameMaker, so I don't have to declare it anywhere, or define it anywhere, or set it before this anywhere. I'm just going to check it, and it, it uh, is being kept track of automatically. And I'm going to limit the vertical speed to 12. So if the player is moving faster than, than 12 uh, down, and so if we're saying faster, we're going to choose larger than. If it's larger than 12, then we're going to limit that speed. So in order to limit it, we'll come back to our variable section and we'll set the vertical speed. And we'll set it to 12. That's where we wanted to cap out. So if you think about how this would work, the player, if they're way up at the top of the room, for example, and they fall off a ledge, will be able to detect that there is no solid object one pixel beneath them. That will set the gravity at 0.5. They'll begin falling, and as they continue to fall, they'll pick up speed. If they hit uh, a vertical speed of 12, then we'll detect that and we'll limit it so that once they reach a vertical speed of 12, they just stay at that speed until they contact uh, a solid object. And when they contact that solid object, uh, then will gravity will be set to zero. Next, let's add a collision with those uh, solid objects. So I choose collision, and I'm going to select object block. Now object block is the parent object to the other block objects. Let me open one up to show you. So here I've got the uh, the uh, horizontal block object, and you'll notice that its parent is object block. Same thing with the vertical block, its parent is object block. And you'll remember from our previous uh, lectures that the if you set up a collision event with the parent, that same collision will work with all of the children of that parent, uh, unless you go into one of those children and set up a different kind of collision. So what do we want to have happen if the player object collides with an object block? We're going to use uh, something here called move to contact. And let me explain a little bit what that means. We need to have our uh, player object land sort of nicely on the ground if they're falling from the air and then they'd come down and, and land on the ground. And uh, it's a little trickier to do than it may seem. The way GameMaker works is if an object happens to be moving pretty fast, it will take a, you know, a split second for the game to notice that uh, a falling object has collided with another object. And by the time the 
game maker actually notices that that's taken place, it's possible that the falling object has already uh, visibly moved inside the bounds of the object that it collides against. In this case, it might look as if it's fallen inside the ground object. So what game maker will do is once it detects that the uh, object has collided with another one, it's going to uh, essentially move the object back a little bit to its previous position to where it was before GameMaker detected the collision. That sounds good, except what sometimes happens is that it may uh, screw up, basically, and it will. It, it's possible that your falling object will uh, be placed in a position that isn't quite on the ground, so it'll look like it's floating slightly above the ground. So in order to take care of that problem, we need to use an action with our collision, in this case, uh, we're checking to see if our character is colliding with a solid object, called move to contact. And move to contact is here on the move tab in the jump section. What this is going to do is it's going to move the instance of an object in a direction that you set until that object just perfectly connects or collides with uh, another object. So in our case, we're going to set this up uh, for a falling move to contact. So we're going to set our direction to direction. In this case, it means whatever direction our uh, player object is moving, we're going to check and in that direction, and we're going to start moving, continuing to move in that direction. Maximum is uh, how far uh, you can actually move. So we're going to set it to 12. It's not really necessary. This is how many pixels away uh, is the maximum that it will move. And then we're going to check uh, if it's moving, t uh, if it interacts or collides with a solid object. And doing this, it'll take care of that uh, possible issue of having our player look as if he's floating slightly above the ground. It'll uh, quickly move him so he is up against the ground. Once the uh, player object then moves into position, we're going to change our uh, vertical speed. That's also here in the move section. Uh, to zero. Basically it's setting it so uh, the player was falling and once it uh, collides with the ground we want it to, st we want it to stop falling. Uh, so we'll position it correctly and then we'll set the vertical speed to zero. Next let's add the control uh, of movement events and actions for our player object. Let's start with the left uh, keyboard event. For our left keyboard event, the first thing we're going to do uh, is we want to show the correct uh, uh, sprite. The left sprite when we're going left, the right sprite when we're uh, going right. So let's uh, choose the change sprite event, select the left sprite, and leave everything else in its default settings. Next we need to do a very important thing, which is to check whether or not the space to the left of our player is open, or if there's a wall or a platform there. So we're going to use the check empty action, that's here in the control tab. It's the very first one under the question section. Uh, you do check empty. And we're going to set the speed of movement of our player using jump to position, this is coming up in just a second, to um, four pixels per sort of step or per uh, check. So in order to make it work correctly to check if there's an open space available to the left, we need to check four pixels over to the left. That will make it match with the amount of distance that our player object is going to move as the uh, uh, left arrow is pressed on the keyboard. So 
In terms of the settings, what that means is we're going to check uh, minus 4 pixels to the left on the same space uh, vertically, just uh, looking only to the left, and we're checking if, it's, if there's a solid object. And we need to have relative so that we're going from the current position of our player object 4 pixels to the left. Then, if that is the case, if we do have an open space, four to the left, then we're going to move our player into that open space. To do that, we're going to use the jump to position action. And no surprise, we're going to move it four pixels to the left relative to where the object is at the moment. Let's do the same thing now for moving right. So we'll add a right uh, keyboard event. Again, we'll change our uh, sprite. This time we'll choose the right-facing sprite. Leave everything else uh, just as is. We'll check to see if there's an open position to our right. This time that means 4 rather than negative 4 relative to where we are at the moment. And if that is true, then we'll jump to that position. Finally, we need to create a way for our player object to jump up into the sky so that it can get up onto the other platforms. We're going to set this up differently from the way we set up the left and the right arrow keys uh, in a couple of different ways. So let me show you how we can set it up well. I'm going to add an event. And for left and right, we did a keyboard event. That was useful because it allowed us to uh, have the player hold down the left arrow key or the right arrow key. And if they kept holding down those keys, the player would continue to move left or right. We don't want that to happen with the jump, right? They're not going to fly up into the sky. We want them to just be able to jump a certain distance and then not be able to jump any further until they're back on the ground. So to do that, we're going to use a key press event instead. We'll click the uh, up direction. And uh, with left and right, in order to move, what we did was to check if there was an open space to the left or right. And if there was, we would move our player into that space. Instead, on the jump, we need to first check if our player is on the ground. And only if the player is on the ground are they able to jump. So we're going to do a different check this time. We're going to use the check collision action, and we're going to investigate whether or not there is a solid object one pixel below where the player object is at the moment. And in order to make sure that we're checking one pixel below the player, we need to choose the relative checkbox. If you don't, it won't work the way you expect it to. Assuming that the player is on the ground, then we can move them. And we're going to move them by using the speed vertical action. And we're going to set our speed to minus 12. So that means that the player will begin moving up in the air when they press the up key on their keyboard. But if they're not on the ground and they press the up key again, nothing will happen. It will only allow them to jump again next time they come down and hit the ground. So let's save our work and give it a test. Uh, you'll want to come to your room and make sure that you have an instance of your player object sitting somewhere in your room. I've already got one sitting here, so I can go ahead and give it a try. So here's our little player. If I press my right arrow key, he moves to the right till he collides with something. Left arrow key moves to the left till he collides with something. I press the up arrow, he jumps up in the sky. I can press it repeatedly while he's in the sky, but it won't matter. If I'm running along and I press him, he'll go up and land on a platform above. Uh, the physics, as I mentioned, are a little weird, because normally when you're flying, when you're jumping up in the air, you can't continue to change your direction easily while you're in the sky. But in video games, you can often do that. Uh, so we're getting somewhere. Let's uh, continue on and add in some uh, collectibles and some hazards into our room.